So we've just driven all the way over Dartmoor to the complete opposite side. Um, it's really cool seeing Rip on tour and also speaking to a local that actually used the site for shooting. We're now actually going to go and see two American plane crash sites uh, from the Second World War out in the middle of Dartmoor, a bit more isolated. Um, we've got a really long walk on our hands first. Um, hopefully it's not too difficult. Um, but there's actually bits of the planes still there on the ground today. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing them as long as we can actually get there. Wait, should we not just go? Oh. Yeah, I'd watch out. Right, I think this is one of the crash sites. Now, it was flooded in the photos, but we've got the remains of the crash. It's not much, I did say, but this is without a doubt the crater caused by a B-17 Flying Fortress, an American plane that crashed here on Dartmoor. And this is one of the um, points where it hit the ground, I suppose. Um, and look, it's all around, there's just bits of metal. Look at that. Parts of a plane just left. It's funny, one of these B-17s crashed on Canvey Island where Joe and I are actually from um, on the marshes and look out in Dartmoor it's literally untouched incredible that is cool to be honest this is the wall right in front of your eyes and look at that it's carved into a piece of the metal I'd assume from the fuselage or something Got a sign there. Look at that. Shall I prop it up for it? Unfortunately, it looks like it's become a little unstable. What does it say on there? Memory in memory of the crew, Bovenden 8th Air Force B17 that crashed on December the 25th, 1943. And look, we've got here Ernst Patterson, Raymond Coates, Richard. Neary, Sherwood Renner, Samuel Craig, Mario Apanetti, Albany Blanchard and Basil Brown. Um, they were pilots, navigators, engineers, radio operators and gunners. Um, and all these members, um, well, injured or died. It looks like how many? Six of them? Or is that? One, two, five. Five died, three injured. Here we go. This one here is the uh, oh, yeah. RAF liaison. Yeah. Do so you think he was around. in the plane with him, I suppose? RAF met OBS. Me meteorological observation, perhaps. Yeah. Well, I don't know why he'd be involved, but perhaps he was on the craft as well. Yeah. And look, here we have the actual remains of the plane. I mean, that is insane, to be honest. I mean, you do have to remember, you know, people actually died on this very spot. So in some ways, this is a graveyard to those people. But it is crazy to think that the remains here out in the middle of the moors, they're not anywhere near the footpath. It was a hassle to get here. Um, but look, what have we got? We've got bits of the engine. Look at that. That is just... I mean, you don't expect this to be lying in the middle of the no middle of nowhere in England, really. Perhaps in other countries, but it certainly is isolated. Got some sort of rubber here. It's sort of a bit molten looking. Um, look at all that. Do you think this is aluminium, the silvery stuff? Which is probably why it's kept its sort of luster, if you'd call it that. What have we got down here? We've got little bits. It's caught up in amongst bolts. Pieces like this. If anyone knows what any of these bits are, obviously, let us know. And um, I must say, 
it is actually it's strictly illegal to take any of these pieces and remember that this is a graveyard these are in some ways the gravestones of this site so um, you know let's keep this site the way it is we've got some pieces of the fuselage or something down there big pieces of steel got all this melted what I can assume is aluminium and that must be part of the engine who knows some more parts here we've also got this sort of piece of rope um, it's got a sort of metallic finish like a metal uh, wire really that is cool and it's all just left here since 1943 when the plane come down. Got a bit of information. So it's the crash site of a B-17 Flying Fortress and this is Tiger Marsh near Corn Ridge on Dartmoor. And it was off on a meteorological recon, salty, and it entered a cloud, a heavy cloud, and because I suppose it couldn't see the ground, it struck the hill um, and five of the crew members died and a large scar remains on the boggy hilltop, as well as melted aluminium and armour plating pieces, which is exactly what you can see right there. Um, so perhaps it hit the hill in the distance there, or maybe it was this hill. Um, I guess it must have impacted the ground here. So yeah, there we go, incredible. We're now gonna head out onto the next plane crash site um, and I think this actually occurred, the next crash only occurred a few days later um, and there's actually a lot more of this one left today. We've been walking just through the grass to get between the two crash sites. Um, yeah, there's no real footpath between them so we've had to walk a long way through the long grass. It's not very stable for the foot. We've been doing it for about, I don't know, 45 minutes. I think we've finally made it to the second crash site. This one is of the Liberator aircraft, an American naval um, plane, part of the United States Navy, I think, and it would have done maritime patrols and bombing. Um, and somewhere down here is the remains of it. The plane is crashed throughout the rocks here. From Google Earth, it looked entirely flat but that's the problem, you can't tell the elevation from it. So we've had to traverse a huge valley. Doesn't look too bad looking downwards. I mean, you look up, I mean, that is, you know, I reckon that's an 80 degree slope. So this is called Slipper Stones. We've got the West Oakmont River and we've got Black Ator, which is the rocky outcrop on the other side of the valley. Um, and the plane crashed here at the bottom. Um, you can see why it crashed, because the amount of rocks and elevation here. If it was cloudy, there's no way they would have seen where they were going. So then we've finally made it down slip of stones to the bottom. Um, we've finally gotten to the crash site of the Liberator American aircraft. Here it is. Look at that. I mean, it just looked like a pile of rocks from a distance because it's all alum aluminium. It's not rusted very much at all. Um, it's all quite silvery still. Look at that. I mean, to think that stayed there since 1943. Crazy stuff. Um, and there's actually three other pits. I think there's one right at the bottom of the valley. There's one up that way, and I think there should be another one quite near to here. This is the first bit of the crash site. Look at all the bits you've got in there. Bits of aluminium. Still got little fixtures attached, bits of fabric. It's just like tin foil or something. It's so lightweight, which I suppose it had to be to stay in the air, but look. Still got insulation or whatever on the pipes in there. Look at that. It's crazy.
would never believe this was in England, really. It's taken us a long old while to get here, so I'm glad it was worth it. <laughs> here must be a piece of the armour plating on the exterior. And then various bits of aluminium in the middle. I found a bone. Now, I'm guessing that's from a sheep. Either way, it does kind of show that people really did die on this very spot. Um, and I think the more tragic thing is, well, I think they'd completed their mission. They'd gone all the way out to the Bay of Biscay um, on, re on a recon mission, I believe. And it was only as they were coming back to their base that they actually caught the rocks here just before they actually made it home. Um, and here the wreckage, I think the wreckage was actually put into several sort of burial pits. So this is one of the four. We just noticed here as well, on this piece of aluminium, we've still got the green paint on the plane. So we've just found the next pit where the remains of the Liberator aircraft um, crash site has been put into pits such as this. And look at it, there's actually even more of it here. Um, you can actually get an idea of the actual, the fuselage of the aircraft. Um, let's take a look. Got bits and bobs there. It's the aluminium. Looks almost brand new. It's definitely not. Bits of steel that have rusted an awful lot now. Just look at all that. See, we've actually got a big bit of the hull of it fuselage and you've got sort of the interior there because it's got it sort of corrugated reinforcement for the walls all them sort of rivets and stuff have been put into it and there it is so i've got a sort of stainless steel pipe in the middle some wires it's insane i think this was all um part of the plane that crashed here So then guys, I think that's gonna wrap up today's adventure. It's been really cool seeing the plane crash sites. I can't believe all that stuff. is still there left out in the wilderness of England um, as it was when these planes first crashed back in 1943. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to see the last remains of the last two um, pieces of debris, or at least burial pits from the Liberator aircraft. We just couldn't find them. It's really hard to spot them um, You can't really see where the crash site pieces are until you're right on top of them So I'm gonna have to put a picture up now, which this is a picture that someone's taken of um, a grave sort of sign For the people that died there because I think it's important for us to remember You know people did die at these sites given their lives in the Second World War um, it's a shame we didn't get to see that, but what we did get to see was absolutely incredible. Unlike nothing I've ever come across exploring England so far. So cheers for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the adventure. I hope you found it interesting and learnt something um, you may not have known existed before. Um, so remember guys, if you like this sort of stuff, subscribe to Beyond The Point TV. Um, check out our website beyondthepoint.co.uk. We've got a Facebook, 
um, and Instagram if you want to keep updated with some of the photographs that we've done and uh, want to read our articles about the historic places that we've visited. So I think I'm going to call it a day there, but thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you on the next trip. We've just been walking absolutely miles off the path through the grass. Ankles are absolutely wrecked. On our way back, we've come across this old um, boiler house, I think it is, for a peat manufacturing site here. Which is believable because it's very marshy here. You yeah, have just got a bit of a ruin. Before I show you this, there's a quick finale. Before we actually get back onto the beaten track, we've literally just been walking through absolutely nothing basically. Grass for miles and miles. Uphill, downhill, all the rest of it. But finally we found a road. Civilization.